Namaskar. Namaskar. What's your name? My name is Xavier. 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 Yes. Yes. Uh, from Bordeaux, and my mother name was Mary. <laughs> you don't have to tell me that. That's only sometimes. Where are you from, actually? Where were you born? Bordeaux in France. Ah, Bordeaux. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. Um, my question is about the input that the outside environment mm -hmm. has on my ability to focus on the inner. The food, for example, the pollution, the toxicity, because I definitely feel that if I eat a certain type of food, it's easy for me to concentrate on the inner divine. And sometimes it's very difficult. The lack of sleep, for example, also. So. Very, very surely the food will impact that, that ability to connect, to surrender actually, it's not even to connect, it's to surrender. The more the foods that you eat are sattvic, meaning foods that don't excite the system. So, what are foods that excite the system? Any animal foods excite the system. Dead animals eaten will excite the system because when the animals are killed for food, there is fear in the system and it releases chemicals into the system which when you ingest of course will create the same issues of fear in you. So, foods which are not sattvic, meats, sharp foods, chili, all of those things I don't have to say it, I think everybody knows that here already. Sattvic foods, when they are eaten, will help the surrender process, for sure. Rest, very, very important. Because the ego grows when the rest is too little. What does that mean that the ego grows? It means that the system is too weak to actually bend and surrender to the truth when there is not enough rest. So that is a very important factor as well. I do have to say, and you brought up toxicity in the air we breathe, there are certain things we cannot fight against in a sense, or we cannot avoid because the air is the air. You know, we have to breathe it. If we can't move locations, we breathe that air. There is an interesting process though that happens, and that is that when that surrender is really deep, the deeper the surrender, the more the ability of the body to eliminate that which causes suffering. Very fascinating and interesting. So, if you are deeply in surrender, it is highly possible that the system will start to eliminate toxins without you actually doing the liver cure and the kidney cure and all of that. One can do all of that, yes, but it seems to be that it's happening like that. That's mm -hmm. the observation. Mm -hmm. So, even the impacts of bad air or things like that can be reduced by this surrender because the whole system is pliable. It just is just somehow allowing. You know what I mean? It's just mm -hmm. in a state of surrender. So, whatever is going to attack the system. The system just bends and it just moves on, mm -hmm. a little bit in that way. Mm -hmm. It's in fact one of the only ways you can protect yourself. How else? I mean, unless you wear like a big space suit. <laughs> so the space suit that we have is the space suit of surrender. Because mm -hmm. it actually transforms, it really makes you stronger physically. Thank you. Um, can I ask yeah. one? Yes, yes. It's we have time. I'll yes. take you after. It's about what you said yesterday that every living thing has a soul. And when I see the soul in an animal, how can I eat this animal? And I have the same uh, issues with uh, vegetables and yes. plants and living things. So, am I supposed to just eat rocks? Is that it? Or? Uh, are you supposed to what? Just eat rocks. <laughs> Finally, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, I mean what I'm saying. So, we have processes that are in play currently. We have the mineral world and then we have 
the plant animal world and then the human world and humans overstep the the animal world and eat plants and the next big step that will happen is of course the human is not the last being on this planet there are new beings that are appearing next beings i call them so as more and more of these next beings appear the jump is made further and further away from the plant world also into the mineral world so increasingly human beings will nourish themselves with minerals because their systems will be able to actually survive only with minerals so it isn't entirely an impossibility what you said mm-hmm. is there already some recipes or of food that is already more mineral based that is available increasingly people are finding ways and means of circumventing the plant world it might even be through synthesized foods mm-hmm. you know you're so right that when one so when one eats a a plant it is a plant being eaten it's different if it's a fruit because a fruit is something which is you know given off by the plant once it leaves the plant it starts to lose its prana of course so it's a different story mm-hmm. so fruits or vegetables are different from a plant itself you understand because of the prana once the vegetable has disengaged from the plant its prana starts to dissipate it's not alive mm-hmm. <laughs> but i'm still saying what i'm saying <laughs> so we start not to eat plants themselves but whatever the produce of the plant is mm. and we gradually move to minerals so as as the trajectory progresses we have minerals we have plants animals humans next beings mm-hmm. as the next beings emerge more and more humans will humans will actually go beyond the plants more and more towards the mineral part of that trajectory mm-hmm. and the next beings as well mm-hmm. because the next beings are not going to eat humans mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. humans have eaten animals mm-hmm. it's a jumping over and as this trajectory proceeds the beings will only rely on minerals mm-hmm. yeah. which have no life is it about uh, the suffering of the being or is it about the killing of the plants because for example when I, i have a garden i grow my vegetables yes. and i don't pick up the lettuce i only pick one leaf a day and the day after there's two leaves growing and the lettuce lasts for three months it keeps mm-hmm. growing more and more leaf mm-hmm. and i feel like if i pick a few leaf of each plant it doesn't cause more stress and the garden is thriving and i do it with a lot of gratitude and love and i feel mm-hmm. there's nothing wrong with that it's a very individual thing if one has one's own vegetable garden then one really feels the you know the life of those plants and it's all real it's not just something in a book so then one has to become very delicate how one operates with it and removing a few leaves is always better than mm-hmm. killing the whole thing you know mm-hmm. yeah but gradually one starts to migrate away from that actually to only the produce itself like fruit that are falling you know and then slowly to minerals it will happen it is the progression that will happen anyways so i'll take her question if you have another question you can come back afterwards we have announced the winter schedule for presents with maharishika on our website Please visit maharishika.org/winterschedule2022